two years ago and was so popular it had to be rationed to two tubs per customer, even though it cost six times the price of other margarines. Finland was a nation of fatties then, so they needed it. But does Prof Regan? Well, according to the marketing, two-thirds of us do have high cholesterol, putting us at risk of heart disease. And so are there any side effects to taking the medication? These aren't um, medication, these are actually food products. That's yes. the great thing but about are there them. any side effects to changing your diet in that way so that you're not absorbing cholesterol? No, uh, there's absolutely no side effects. And it's true. Research does suggest that these products can safely lower your cholesterol by between 10 and 14 percent. But even if they do work, Professor Regan is not going to let them into the trolley that easily. And how long would I need to be taking one of these products uh, for, um, for me to see an effect? Within two weeks' time, uh, generally an, inf an effect on your blood cholesterol level, and particularly on the bad cholesterol levels. And as soon as I stop taking the product, then the beneficial effect on my cholesterol goes? Yes. Within a week to two weeks' time, you will see your cholesterol returning to your original level, yes. Mm -hmm. And what about the cost? If you choose from the spreads, it's approximately £70. Pounds. And then of these, you said these were 50 pence a day, did 50 you? pence, yeah. So it's uh, a little bit, oh, it's over £100. Pounds. Mm. So they're slightly more well, expensive. Well, nearly 200 really. Well, 180 I think. Nearly but, 200 Yeah. <laughs> nearly £200 pounds a year for a potentially life-saving product sounds like a bargain. But now, there's competition. Medically proven drugs called statins have been developed. They also reduce cholesterol. I'll tell you that I've had my cholesterol measured this week and it's within the normal range. Yes. I'll also tell you that I'm also taking a statin. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that I should be adding one of these products in on a daily basis? Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, my cholesterol level is around 4 millimolars per litre. I have been uh, myself involved in developing this product from the early stage onwards. I use every day, I use these products. But why are you not taking a statin? Uh, I don't feel ill. Uh, Nor I do have, I. No. What I'm pushing you to, uh, to help me understand is if I had the choice between going down the statin route or going down the product route, which one should I be choosing and why? I don't see that it is an issue of either statins or either proactive or benacol. They can work together. And uh, we feel there is a very uh, well place uh, for these types of products. They have been well researched. There are uh, over tens of studies. And there are studies, no side effects. And that there are you no know side of. effects. Uh, so they really deserve their place. But will these products actually go into Prof. Regan's supermarket trolley? Well, yeah. They've got studies behind them demonstrating that they're of benefit. Um, but for myself, personally, I can't see why I would want to rely on what I eat every day when I can take a tablet um, that I know is going to work and reduce my cholesterol. Well, perhaps there I'm prejudiced because I'm medically trained and I would have thought that if I take a pill that it's, sort of a, it's a constant, whereas I might not feel like having a yoghurt or Marmite toast or whatever. So Prof Regan won't be using them. But cholesterol-loading products are backed up by good science, so they will make it into the trolley. What's the connection between thousands of tiny living organisms called bacteria? An antique book. and this working model of a human gut. It smells horrible. They all lead to the probiotic yogurts and drinks that are colonizing our supermarket shelves. And Professor Regan wants to know why. Well, do you know, I'm very, very confused about this. I don't really know what probiotic means. I'm just looking at this. It claims that it helps improve digestive transport. But I, I'm no wiser. Let's start with the word probiotic. It means for life. The probiotic drinks refer to the microscopic life that is growing inside all of us. Bacteria. The average um, human 
carries around about one to one and a half kilograms of microbes inside. I think it's estimated that something like 90 or 95 percent of all the cells in the human body are bacteria inside the large intestine. So there's a lot. <laughs> Since we allow this enormous amount of bacteria to live inside our guts, they must do us some good. So the drinks are teeming with similar bacteria. What is meant to happen is that people ingest these and it boosts the level of good, friendly bacteria which are there in the first place. So you're adding to what you already have. Meet the old Yakults. They haven't changed much in 71 and a half years. Then, and all that time, probiotics have been associated with good health. I take them, all my family do, um, most people I speak to do, in fact. Professor Glenn Gibson's research at Reading University has convinced him that they do work. I think it's hard to ignore the evidence, and the evidence is that there are well over 100 peer-reviewed scientific publications, many of which, most of which have arisen in the last three or four years, which show positive effects of taking probiotics. Evidence suggests many groups of people who have had gut problems, infants with diarrhoea or people with gastroenteritis, have benefited from probiotics. But probiotics are also marketed to healthy people. Did you know that an essential part of your natural defences are the good bacteria in your gut? It's probiotic, so it brings a smile to your whole body. And a healthy gut makes for stronger natural defences. Do healthy people, like Prof. Regan, need probiotics? At Imperial College in London, they are starting to answer this question for the first time. Professor Jeremy Nicholson's team can now analyse the effects of a probiotic on a living human gut. And Professor Regan is concerned. So are you saying that these probiotic drinks actually change the function of the gut? They might do. Right. In which case, they should be classed as a medicine, shouldn't they, not a food? Uh, well, that's not for me to say. But um, the point is that by taking a probiotic, you're actually interfering with an ecology that has evolved in humans that we don't fully understand. So there is the potential for a problem in some people. There has to be. 21 people have volunteered to take a probiotic for three weeks. I think they're a good thing, but maybe that's just the marketing. I don't know. They'll have a controlled diet, and their urine will be tested by Imperial College scientists to see the effects on each individual. It's marketed as a, an improving health benefit, so I'd give it a go and see if it does improve my health. After the trial, some of the results are surprising. This is paracresol. That's actually quite an interesting compound. It's made by clostridia in the gut. So the mauve is before and the sort of crimson is, Abs is after. Absolutely right. Yeah. Now, paracresol is actually uh, an ingredient of creosote. You put it on, uh, paint it onto fences yeah. to um, stop wood rotting. Now, clostridia are bad bugs. So in this particular person, the effect of the probiotic is to encourage the bad bugs, bad exactly bugs. the opposite of what the intended purpose was. If you look at the other, another person here, um, then this has, has exactly the opposite effect. Mm -hmm. So this person had a good response, response. right, because in terms of the... Less of this, um, uh, I never knew that I had creosote sloshing around inside me. Yes, it's amazing what we can it's find. A frightening thought. Yeah. And when we, we've done this for everybody in the study, and guess what? Some of them were good, some hardly did anything, and some of them were a bit on the bad side. What you've convinced me of, absolutely, is how we're all behaving very, very differently. So how is it that the manufacturers of these probiotics can say with such sureness, oh, well, this is going to do you good? Because evidently, they can't really say that, can they? Well, statistically, they sort of can. If you can say, on average, people are better off, then that is a, a sort of legitimate claim. But what we don't know is whether or not, for you as an individual, that's a good thing. Or which of the many different probiotics is the best one for you. So I could take available. one brand of a sort of a yogurty drink in the morning um, and have a totally different response if I took another one. That's absolutely correct. But presumably I'd have to do it by trial and error. And, and how would I assess? Really, you have to do your own clinical trial on yourself to see whether you really do feel better. In the Imperial College trial, a few of the volunteers